Good afternoon. I think it's the afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Lynn, thank you so much for coming by the Zoomtopia studio today. Um, you are the chief privacy officer at Zoom. Can you tell me a little bit just about your role at Zoom and, and what that means to be the chief privacy officer? Yes, of course. So I'm part of the legal and compliance teams. And I have a number of teams that report up to me. Um, uh, one of them is um, compliance and ethics, trust and safety, tech compliance, which is a group of security professionals that help with our security certifications and all that. They're kind of like pre-audit specialists. Mm -hmm. We also have privacy, of course, the privacy legal team, um, and a regulatory compliance team, which is a team that handles, you know, with litigation and other parts of the legal org, how do we respond to regulators and, and queries around the world. That's a lot. <laughs> That's great. It's really exciting. Amazing. So you just, I just heard you on a panel with Smita Hashim, our chief product officer about AI privacy and security. So I'd love to kind of take a step back and just ask you about AI more generally. Like what, what is the most exciting thing to you about AI? And then also, you know, what is some of the more concerning parts of, of AI. Sure, sure. And I will add, because I left them out in my initial uh, response, that the product legal team, so the team of lawyers that helps Smita and the product org, and of course, all of us, um, you know, build and innovate are, are part of my team too. So that's a really exciting or a recent development and that I'm helping to supervise those folks and work with them and huh. really help drive, of course, AI as being one of our main focus areas uh, right now and, and, you know, August, September, getting ready for the AIC launch, the AI Companion, in case, for those of you that may not know, the AI Companion launch. So really excited about that. In terms of, um, you know, what I'm most excited about and what maybe you said that makes me a little nervous or, or what, I'll, look, personally, I don't feel nervous, but I do want to recognize that men do. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that, you know, it's so much a part of our sort of popular culture, science fiction, right? Terminator. I mean, you know, the machines took over, et cetera. Yes. What I will just um, emphasize, although it's all of us as builders and innovators, right? It's our responsibility to make sure it's still there, is the humans are still in charge. Mm -hmm. So let's do what we can and what we believe our customers want and what we believe is the right thing to do, right? which is, as you know, responsible, is one of our three pillars, mm -hmm. Zoom's approach to AI, and I can talk about that if you like. But the humans are still in charge. And so while I think people are, it's completely understandable because we have, that such, captures, you know, such a part of the popular, you know, American culture, that, that kind of worry about the machines. Yeah. Let's just make sure that we're building it in a way that, first of all, does promote transparency so people can understand what's going on and they can use it or not use it, you know, in ways that they're comfortable with. So let's try to keep the humans in charge. Okay, it's, it's like that. <laughs> keep the humans in charge. Yeah, and I'll just finish out, Robin, if it makes sense. So I mentioned responsible as one of our big, um, you know, one of our three, three pillars of our approach to AI. The other two, of course, are federated and empowering. Yeah. And we talked about that a bit before in the session. Um, but the federated approach is really exciting, right? And that's whereby our, our Zoom, as we're building all of these products, we're able to use different models interoperably. And the ones, of course, that, as you know, we mentioned several today. Um, and that's, that's super exciting as well. Yeah. And from a data protection and privacy standpoint, I think customers uh, really appreciate that. I do. I do as well. It's, I mean, it's, it's so interesting to see kind of how we're leading the way in all of this. And it's very, very exciting. Yeah. So from where you sit, which is a pretty unique position, obviously there's tons of guidance coming out all the time. Um, you know, how do you sift through the noise? How do you know what's really important? Um, you know, what you take more seriously and, um, you know, where you kind of feel like, okay, let's keep moving our moving forward. So like, how do you, how do you kind of deal with all of the different types of guidance that comes out? Sure, sure. So, um, you know, as product legal, one of the things, of course, that we try to do is take the burden off of the product people, right? The lawyers don't code, as uh, my boss, Avrin and Bawa, likes to say. But what we can do is try to be really thoughtful and, and um, be, you know, one of the data points that's mm -hmm. out there um, pulling in, as you say, you know, the, the um, best practices and the laws and the regs and so forth. 
So if you think about it, maybe like the rings of a tree, right? We have those regulator and um, external stakeholders who set the laws and the regs. We have customers who have their own expectations and their own compliance obligations. That's kind of the, you know, we need to look at that external ring. And then we have our own internal people, right? And what works, what doesn't work? How do we build those requirements, whether it's from customers or regulators, into the product in a way that still makes it fast, you know, frictionless, usable, mm -hmm. and so on. So kind of that take that external ring and then our own internal ring and then, you know, what works for us is kind of the, the center and how do we make that product the best that it can be with those, with those inputs. And there are a lot of groups out there, um, but I think it's also important to balance not just, you know, that what you sort of described, uh, you know, affectionately as noise, right? <laughs> but what, um, it's not just sort of take all those thousands of stakeholder opinions and mash them up. It's what do we also think is the right thing to do? And that just goes back to responsible. Yeah. The responsible and the federated and how do we make that work for, for Zoom and our, for our product, our platform, and, and be the best that we can be. That's a, that's a perfect kind of segue into my next question, which is really about the ethics around, um, you know, dealing with people's personal data, right? There was just that, that story that came out with the, with the woman on TikTok um, about it was her and her sister who were in a work meeting discussing their outfit and then it was captured on the meeting summary. So how do you how do you think about the ethics surrounding, um, you know, the capturing of personal data within AI? Yeah, well, I'll start, first of all, with our with Zoom's leadership position, what we like to believe is a, and do believe is a leadership position, which is, as you may, as you know, and hopefully others have heard, we made the announcement in August that we are not using customer content to train um, Zooms or third-party AI, generative AI, when we build that into our platform. So what that means is when a user, you know, whether it's an anthropic model, an open AI model, Zoom's own model, you know, depending on what product, and, and for now, mostly we're talking about AI companion, yeah. um, whether it's Zoom's model or those third-party models in Zoom's platform, we are not pulling your inputs or outputs, that's your content, from your meeting space, and we're not using that to train the Gen AI models. So we're really excited about that. Um, it means we have to find other ways, right, to train yeah. those models. And you heard me the talk, we talked a little bit about that earlier. But um, that's super exciting. And what that means is we hope that people can feel confident trying out some of this. This is new for everybody, right? And if, if we want to build the best products, we also want people to try them, give us the feedback. As you know, Zoom is really serious about feedback. We love it. Please send it in. You know, please give it to us. Um, but taking that leadership position to not use the data uh, to train the AI models is really a, a huge step. And as I understand it, that really does differentiate us in the market. And uh, we're excited about that. Yeah. In terms of ethics, then, per se, what I would say, again, is don't, uh, you know, if I were talking to somebody who's never heard of this before and not, is unsure of what to do, um, look at the policies, right? Look at the terms of service. Look, I know it's legalese and it's kind of a drag and I don't, I don't read every terms of service, right? What? Or privacy <laughs> statement that it even gets sent my way. I click, 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 click. Yeah, I just want to go do whatever. But um, look, the data is there, right? The information, I mean, it, it's yeah. specific. The information is there and don't give up your own agency. If you have concerns, read what the company's, you know, privacy statement says. Read what the what their terms say. You know, you know, call us, call whomever. Find out are they serious about how they treat your data and and the you know the privacy protections that they're giving. For us too, um, again, we talk a lot about transparency, but we have a lot of what we call the in product privacy notices. Mm -hmm. First of all, the AI companion is off, right? And the admin has to enable it, so it's off by default. Secondly, for the admin and the user, when you turn on various AI companion features, you get to make choices. So in privacy world, those are traditional principles that are, that are you know, we all live by in the privacy world of notice and choice. Yep. So you have to be able to build in your product, you know, the ability for a user to understand what's going on. And so they, I mean, they probably also should read the privacy statement, but, you know. But you should have something that, that a learn more, a support article, the in-product privacy notices that, you know, help are, are those guideposts for people while they're trying out something new like this. Yeah. 
And then, and then secondarily, um, you know, we try to, we, we, we use that, we use those notices again to, to be helpful and to give people um, a picture of what's going on, mm -hmm. right? So that so they can know that we're trying to protect their data and help them uh, understand what's happening to their data. The other thing I would say is that a lot of the earlier or older models, right, um, were built on the internet, right? They took all the information from the internet up until like two years ago and they shoved them in and, and used that to train the models. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of, I was going to use a not very nice word, but there's a lot of stuff yeah. on the internet, <laughs> as any parent knows, right? As any of us knows, yeah. actually, <laughs> that, um, look, there's a lot of stuff out there I don't want to see. Bad images, bad bad content, you know, unpleasant stuff, um, whether it's harassing or abusive or hateful. That's why we have a terrific trust and safety department, and many companies do. Um, but the idea there is that, uh, look, um, a lot of that stuff was out there in the Internet, and that's built into the models. And so we do have to be careful about um, when you when you're you know, you input your data or your query into a product and then what comes out the other side, if it's been trained on that internet up until now, it may also have something that's abusive or harassing or discriminatory. Right. So as a company, we try to have our trust and safety layers in the product, but we also want to think about how to, again, train in a thoughtful way and not just ingest all of that and spit it back out at the right. consumer. Right. Well, that is, again, another perfect segue. segue. I don't even know if you realized. <laughs> but my next question, which is near and dear to my heart, um, and obviously is being you know, a female leader in a tech company and focusing on AI is, is extremely exciting and I'm privileged to be able to talk to you. Um, but I wanted to know how you think about gender diversity in the tech field, in the, in the field of AI, and how that kind of reflects what we see you know, in some of these models? Yes, no, that's a great question. And look, one of the reasons I, uh, came, I, I came to Zoom in 2020, uh, and so, um, you know, happy to be here, obviously incredible timing. I joined January 13, 2020. Um, one of the reasons <laughs> I joined was because um, tech, as you know, doesn't have the greatest uh, reputation for gender diversity, but Zoom did. Um, Eric Yuan, our CEO, um, uh, did not seem to be somebody who was going to be promoting a bro culture. We had Kelly Steckelberg, our CFO, Aparna and mentioned our COO. You know, we had a female CMO at the time. We had a female CHRO at the time. Like, super exciting. Like, lots of leaders at yeah. the company. Um, and in addition to that, you know, as we... And bring me back if I'm jumping too far ahead here, but we, we think a lot at Zoom about return to the office, right, and hybrid. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a company that's going back five days a week or two days a week, Zoom is here to stay, we hope. <laughs> there are other providers who are here to stay. And the ability to kind of go, you know, pick up a kid at three o'clock, bring them home and go back on your meeting, or maybe stop at seven, take an hour for dinner, and then go back on at night. We, we all work all the time. So the ability to enable working parents, moms and dads, mm -hmm. Aunts, uncles, you know, maybe somebody's um, caring for an ailing parent, an older parent, right? Older generation, yeah. not just kids at home. And so the ability to work as hard as we do and be able to get back online, have a video meeting, right? Have that connection with people. I think it's huge for diversity. I think it, I, I genuinely think it's going to help people stay in the workforce. I think in the pandemic, obviously, we showed that we helped, you know, companies stay afloat, companies oh, yeah. run and help people you know, hopefully keep their sanity while being at home. So I think in terms of that kind of diversity, it's great. We also, of course, um, did things, you know, we learned a lot over the last three years in terms of accessibility. You know, not everybody um, understands and learns and processes in the same way. People might need more time. The meeting summaries, if yeah. you put in the flag, are great for that, right? <laughs> for neurodiversity or just people, maybe you've got too much going on. Maybe you've got a cold that day and you just aren't as sharp. You just yeah. pull up your meeting summary, hopefully, and look at it. We did some things too in terms of accessibility. Um, if I remember correctly, we changed our color blue. You know, we love our blue, right? I love, blue. Mm -hmm. love our blue at Zoom. And um, we changed the color, as I understand it, because one shade was a more better for accessibility. Oh, that's another so cool. color. Yeah, I know that. yeah. So we are a company that's always working for that. And um, given the the return to office and the hybrid future that we have, like the theme of the conference, right, is, is balance. <laughs> yeah, balance the future. Balance the future. Um, work is here to stay, but let's try to make it, let's, let's work smarter, not harder. Yeah. 
And and I think we can help with that. I love that. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. I have just one one more question for you, which is, um, what advice would you give someone else who's sitting in your shoes um, thinking about these kind of challenges when it comes to AI privacy um, and security? You know, what what's the biggest piece of advice you would give someone? So somebody in a similar role, in a privacy role, or maybe a legal, yeah. like legal yeah. role, yes. Well, um, look, it's a great privilege. It's really exciting. What I would say is that, and I, I do believe this is, this is something that Eric believes in, just given, um, you know, we have some great education policies at Zoom. And in my last company, I was at PepsiCo, and Indra Nui, our CEO there, also was a big believer, yep. is lifelong learning. So look, AI is new for, for everybody. We, there are experts out there. We're fortunate to have a few of them here at Zoom. But for most of us, we're learning about it. And so if you're a lawyer um, or if you're somebody who's more from the assurance side, what I would say is just don't stop learning mm -hmm. and, and go for it. I never would have thought maybe six months ago that I would be trying to become also a, a baby expert. <laughs> AI. I would say you're more than a baby expert. <laughs> uh, you know, pl applying those privacy principles, notice, choice, transparency, which again is very much a part of our culture. Um, I would say, you know, go for it. And if there's something that you want to learn, you know, go for it. And, uh, and who knows in six months yeah. what that will bring. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, sorry, one more follow-up because I'm very interested. So what would you say to someone who's thinking about adopting AI in their, in their company and maybe unsure if, if they should do that? Well, what I would say, first of all, is take a look at how we've done it at Zoom. And whether you're using Zoom or a different provider, hopefully you're using Zoom, um, take a look at our policy, which, again, we've talked about, which is that we're not using your data to train Zooms or our third parties that we use, our third-party Gen AI models in the products, Right. So this means we're finding other ways to train and we're not taking your content, which is yours. And, and I think people feel good about that. I feel good about that. Yeah. It's a very privacy forward position. And um, I would start from there and then find out about it. Find out what you want to use and what, what it will do um, with your data to protect your, your employees and your customers' privacy. Amazing. And it, does, it saves a lot of time. It is, it's great. It's been great for, <laughs> for me so far. Well, Thank you so much, Lynn. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, enjoy the rest of, of Zoomtopia. It's been yeah. a lot to see. <laughs> Thank you.